large intestine 11, Gucci, crooked pond, or pool at the bend. It makes sense, right? We bend the elbow, and here's this pool, this, this pond collection of chi and blood in the channel. This is the Hussi point. It is the earth point. Right? Earth point on the metal channel. We know that in the cycle of creation, earth creates metal. So this is the tonification point, right? If there's weakness in, related to the large intestine, to the functions of the channels, to where the, where the uh, distribution of the channel is, right? if you have weakness in Han Yang Ming, right? In the metal channel of Yang Ming, right? Large intestine, then Working this point may be one way to bring energy from earth into metal to make it stronger. It's also a ghost point. When the elbow is flexed, the point is in the depression at the lateral end of the transverse cubital crease, midway between lung five, which we remember is in the cubital crease, on the radial side of the biceps tendon, so midway between lung five and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. This courses pathogenic heat, disinhibits the joints, eliminates water damp, courses wind and resolves the exterior, harmonizes chi and blood. When we talk about coursing pathogenic heat, this might be another, another point that you might want to put some stars next to. This point is a master point for clearing heat, particularly in the upper body, but it's a great point for heat anyway. Again, because of that yang main connection, that storehouse of them, right? So this course is pathogenic heat. It is a master point for clearing heat. Indications for the use of large intestine 11, sore throat, toothache, redness and pain of the eye, urticaria, which is like hives, scrofula, which is swelling of the neck, motor impairment of the upper limb, abdominal pain, diarrhea, vom vomiting, or febrile disease. And I should say that just because there are indications listed, um, for abdominal pain, diarrhea, that we may find points that do these things better, but this can be part of a protocol depending on the cause of why those symptoms are showing up. Right, so yes, it can do those things, um, but we also wanna look at what's the cause of the symptom and pick points that address the cause and not just pick points based on, oh, well, the book says it's good for this, so I'm gonna use it, right? By the end of the semester, my hope is that you'll be able to start thinking about point selection that way, right? Just a little bit in the area of diagnosis, right? Saying, hmm, or assessment, not diagnosis, but assessment. What is the cause of this syndrome according to the precepts of Asian medicine? Now that I know the cause, Right, so assessment first. Now that I know the cause, I can think about what my treatment principles will be, right? So if the cause is heat and stagnation, then my treatment principles may be clear heat and harmonized chi, get it to move. Now I can start picking the points that I want to include in my massage session that will address clearing heat, and harmonizing the chi, right? So assess, treatment principles, prescription, application. That's generally, the, that is the best way to work. Because then if, it's, if you're not, not having the effect that you, that you desire, you have a way to go back and check. Was there a place in there that maybe I misstep? Did I, is my assessment correct? 
are my treatment principles matching to the assessment? Are they, maybe I need to add something or, or switch something there. Are, have I chosen the best points to enact or to support the principles that I'm going to be working under as I apply therapy? Just thought that was an important aside, things to think about. Let's move on. Large intestine 15, Jian Yu, shoulder bone. This is anterior inferior to the acromion on the upper portion of the muscle deltoideus. When the arm is in full abduction, the point is in the depression appearing at the anterior border of the acromioclavicular joint. So the arm is in adduction, right? We see the deltoid, we see the acromioclavicular joint, there's a depression right there where the point is. Okay. Of course, I want you to be familiar with these locations, but that's what our class time and lab time is going to be used for. It's going to be used for, for feeling it on each other and locating them. The functions of large intestine 15, Jiang Yu, horses wind and quickens the connecting vessels, harmonizes qi and blood, disinhibits the joints. Can you think of a joint specifically that it might disinhibit? Guess shoulder. Dispels pathogens and resolves heat. Pain in the indications, pain in the shoulder and arm, motor impairment of the upper extremity, difficulty moving the arm, yes, rubella, and scrofula, right? Dealing with, with opening up the area below the neck, right? So there can be some movement in those lymph, uh, those uh, lymphatic uh, nodes and passageways. Again, there may be stronger points for that, but in, in combination, um, we may see some of that, some good effect there. But large intestine 15, great point for shoulder problems. Again, here's a picture. And we move now to large intestine 20. Ying Xiang, welcome fragrance. Why do we think it's called welcome fragrance? Well, look at where it's located. It's in the nasolabial groove at the level of the midpoint of the lateral border of the ala nasi, right? Kind of the nostril, the nostril, yeah? So the midpoint of the lateral border of the ala nasi unblocks the nose, really, and another one of those points that generally has a great effect in clearing the sinuses, the, the, the maxillary sinuses, opening the nose. Dissipates wind pathogen and clears qi fire. Indicated for nasal obstruction, hyposmia, which is uh, inability to smell, right, can be caused by obstruction, right? When your nose is blocked, you can't smell. Right, which affects taste, as we know. But they're also, um, well, let's, let's leave that there for now. Um, epistaxis, right, which is nosebleed, rhinorrhea, runny nose, uh, deviation of the mouth, itching, and swelling of the face. These could be related to wind. Right, we're talking about dissipating the wind pathogen, right? Deviation of the mouth, any kind of facial deviation, deviation of the tongue, um, right, itching, can be a sign of wind, right? Because wind causes things to move and it disrupts their harmonious movement, right? Wind can also affect the descending of chi and fluids and we can end up with some swelling as well. Right? But we may see some swelling if we have a case of wind affecting the descending function of the lung. Or if the lungs get impaired, we may see some facial swelling as well. That concludes our lecture on the 
large intestine channel of Han Yang Ming. I look forward to seeing you in class, reviewing this information, and putting it into practice.